Hello everyone, my name is Jordan Schutz and I work at MuleSoft as a developer advocate. In today's tutorial, we're gonna be covering some common Salesforce integration patterns that you should be familiar with when you're attempting to integrate Salesforce with MuleSoft. So in this video tutorial, we're gonna be covering three of the five. We're gonna be covering migration, broadcast, and aggregation. If you wanna read the rest of the data patterns, feel free to visit developer.mulesoft.com and you can read the full tutorial where we have this all documented out for you. So the first one that you can see here in this flow is data migration. And data migration happens when you have a specific set of data located on one system. And then what you wanna do is you wanna basically take that data and then put it on another system. And I would say that the migration pattern really applies to a number of different Salesforce integration use cases. And it's one of the most common integration use cases that we've seen developers use. The broadcast pattern is very, very important, and this is one that's completely automated. And it usually requires a single source system that has then multiple destination systems. And what you need to do is you need to be able to take that data from that one single source and then move that to multiple destinations in real time. And so you can think of the broadcast pattern as almost like a one-way sync. And this is optimized for processing records really quickly. and it's also used to basically keep data up to date between multiple systems. These first two flows that we can see here are actually connected. So we have an HTTP listener on the left hand side, which then selects some data from a database, which then transforms that data into a payload that's required for Salesforce to read that data. And then we have a for each loop, which then will create a new lead for every new value that isn't already inserted into Salesforce. So when we create these brand new leads in Salesforce, the broadcast pattern is then gonna kick in because when there's an on modified object in Salesforce and there's a brand new lead, this entire flow will execute. Or let's say you even go and you edit a lead, this flow will execute. And what this flow will do is it has a transform message where it basically maps out the payload into a format that we want it. And then the scatter gather allows us to execute these two write commands at the exact same time. We're basically writing to accounts.csv and then we're writing to accounts to CSV. And if we go to these CSVs, we can actually see they don't exist. But what we need to do is let's actually make a call to Postman. Let's add new information to Salesforce. And what we'll see is that new information that we add to our Salesforce database It'll, th that new data will then appear in two CSV documents on our local machine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Postman and let's make a post request and call Salesforce. So that may have taken a few seconds, but what you can see is that we've successfully made a call to Salesforce. All of the information that we retrieved in our return response, this is all of the existing data that's in our database, but a lot of this data already exists in our Salesforce instance. So the data that didn't exist actually has been added in accounts and accounts to CSV. We can see here that these specific leads with these email addresses were automatically then added um, to both of the CSV files. And that's because those that information wasn't located in Salesforce, so it was able to write to those files using scattergather, and this all executed in real time. Lastly, let's go over the aggregation pattern. Um, aggregation, it's really the simplest way to extract and process data from multiple systems into one application. So in this specific use case, what we're doing is we're using scattergather to, to make two HTTP requests to different end systems. And we have two CSV files. We have user data CSV and we have more user data.csv. And both of these CSV files are located on an Amazon AWS instance. So what we do is we store both of these payloads as variables, and then we have a transform card, which actually is able to merge these two CSV files together. So what we do is we use the index to basically figure out, okay, this is where we're gonna insert annual revenue and phone number information into the other payload. And then what it's able to do is it's able to map both of those variables together and create one single payload, which then we can upload to Salesforce. So let's actually see how this works. So when we go over to Postman, let's click the send button and we're gonna call the aggregation endpoint. And as you can see here, the two, or the, the two CSV files only had a few leads in it. But what we can see is we were able to 
combine annual revenue and phone number and we were able to merge that with first name last name email and company which were which was found on the other csv document so what we're able to do is we were able to take two csvs and merge them together using data weave and we can see this code is located right here if you have any further questions please reach out to us at mule dev and please read this full tutorial on developer.mulesoft.com there's also a jar file that I've included in the tutorial that you can download and you can actually try this project live on your own AnyPoint Studio instance and then actually upload this to Cloud Hub and try it live with a live URL. So I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. Thank you so much and I hope you have a great one.